Hopefully. Yeah, I've actually had that happen before. My, my cousins, they were just kicking me all over. Alright guys, it's time to class, hopefully to help you guys out. Um, this one's going to be, uh, we're going to touch up on some, yeah, some of the work. Touch up on your stance, uh, footwork, and body mechanics, and how to use your hips to get more power out of your strikes and stuff like that. So the uh, first thing I'm going to go through is um, for holding a flat leg. For what I've learned before, you guys all use flat legs. So I don't know if it matters. You guys start the right foot. Edges? It has to be an edge. It has to be an edge to get it for. Okay, perfect. All right, so when a lot of people pick up a flat sword, they, they typically just want to pick it up this way. I always tell people, you want to tilt it a little bit to the side because when you do strike, you're not always flat this way. Oh, I'm going to back up so the camera can see. <laughs> Alright, when you're striking, say you're striking for hips, you don't always strike exactly flat because it feels weird on the point. You're always going to strike kind of like this. So if you want it, you want a nice, so if I'm completely straight, for me to get a nice flat, I have to be completely flat. But if I already tilt it a little bit, then I can get a flat one without going exactly like this. I have a little bit of a tilt. It's, it's more natural when I swing. Okay. So having this little bit of a tilt to your to your holding strike, I don't know if you guys have learned this before, will give you that edge. And same thing when you go over this way. If you wanted it completely flat, then you're, you're kind of putting your hand down. So another reason why I know I feel like this type of handle is good is if you guys ever do a wrap shot, be able to get around the side just flat wraps. This motion here, it stops, and then there's your your, your edge. All right. So if you ever need to get behind someone, and you got a big strike, and you're doing a wrap around the block or something, you want that edge to hit. You're just spinning your forearm, and you can get that edge to hit. If you guys have more questions on how to throw a wrap shot, I'll teach you that. No problem. But uh, that's just how I want to show to you. hold your sword, not exactly. Like that. So next is your stance. All right. A lot of martial arts will teach you your stance properly. Um, what I would say is how your your hips work. You don't get full power until you end up where your front foot points. All right. So if, you, if you're like this, and you guys can all try it right now. If you're like this and you rotate your hip, your hip wants to stop here. All right. Try, just try putting your foot more angled. Then yeah, no, your other one. Yeah. Now rotate your hip and kind of see. All right, just kind of see where your hip wants to stop. Feel where your hip stops, right? Now all of a sudden, do the same thing. Now put your foot your forward and see how much further your hip can move. You guys feel that? That means you can get your motion of fall through your power if you if you keep your foot out a bit more. If you're doing this, you're stopping your motion right here. It's where my hip wants to stop. My hip wants to stop there. Right? That makes sense for everyone. So you, the biggest importance of your footwork when you are working and doing drills on your footwork is always to make sure that your footwork is proper. So you want to make sure this is where your opponent is. And your back foot, depending on how you like it, I always like it at a 45 degree angle. Kind of just so you have that steadiness. You don't want it back here. Unless you're doing some quick backup, but if you're moving, if you want some stability, make sure it's 45 degree angle. Same thing the other way, all right? So foot pointing at your opponent, and this one's 45. You can always do 90 if you're comfortable with 90. I prefer 45, depending on how you like it, okay? Um, now there's the different stances between sword foot, what I call sword foot forward, and sword foot back. Uh, so there's the advantages if you're using a shield and you have sword foot forward, your counter strikes are going to be faster. Okay? That's the advantage of having sword foot forward. You can strike faster and you can counter strike faster. 
All right, but then this side is open more. So you gotta always be careful of that. That's the advantage to it. If you're using a two-handed sword, and you wanna do, so I'm left-handed with two-handed sword. So I'm doing, your sword foot forward is your, your, your dominant hand forward. You have more defense against someone of the same handedness. So, um, is anyone else left handed or holding a great sword? Are you all right? right here. What's that? Chris is right here. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a sword? Someone grab another two handed sword if you have one. So that way I can show you. I don't care if it's cold steel, you can grab the cold steel sword. So the advantage to, I'm going to go my bad hand, which is right handed in this stance. And are you right? No, you're going to go right handed. Is that how, this is how you prefer? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're right handed, sword foot forward, against another right handed, you have more defense. Because you're, you're in the lane of their defense, right? And then you can move and you can keep that defense. That's the advantage to being here. Alright, if you're the opposite, no, no, you stay the other You have more offense. So it all depends on how you, how you, oh sorry, no, no that doesn't work. You don't typically want to go offhand forward when you're using two hand swords. This doesn't make sense to me. Anyone, does anyone see this very often? Yes. You do? When you're moving around a lot or just as a, as a starting stance? I'm also confused because I'm, I'm holding right-handed here. <laughs> so this isn't my typical handness. So let me. Most Italian ones I'm thinking of are left foot forward to move into to move into your striking stance. Yeah. So then they will be set pieces. Okay. So I guess if you're you're far away. Okay. Two two hits later, you're working on your works, right? Yeah, I can see that. And that comes into what I'm going to talk about in a bit. But if you're already up close to someone, I don't see an advantage to being this up, an advantage to being this way. Because you need to get that hip movement in to strike, and you're too close. So yeah, if you're starting at a good distance, I would say so. Um, another one I would say is if you stab, but you guys don't stab, do you? No. Okay. So that's, that's the other one that if, if you were sword foot back or you front foot back, then stabbing has a big advantage because then you can get that extra lunge in. Yeah. Um, but for you guys, I would say that if you're right up close, make sure that you're sword foot forward. But if you're back, like you said, you can do it this way. But that's just so you can get your momentum when you're walking into someone, right? So that makes most sense to me. And thank you for pointing that out. Um, Sword foot back for sword and board, which is board foot forward. You have less offense, but more defense. You'll be able to punch this out more, get more angles of defense. You guys have kind of heard me talk about angles of defense before. But it, uh, because you're keeping this, you have more defense if you put your board forward. That's the main advantage of doing that stance. Okay, I just wanted to quickly go through those before I talked about footwork and um, body mechanics. All right. So next would be, all right. so when you're moving in your basic stance. So once you've got, make sure that you know your stance and you're comfortable with, make sure you're pointed forward and stuff like that. Make sure you know how to move in, in your stance. Now I've seen you guys do drills for forward and back, right? You always move this one forward first or this one back first, right? So you don't collapse. Unless, of course, you need to move quickly. But, oh, let's stay in camera here. All right. Um, so you gotta make sure you know how to move forward and back. I'm not worried about teaching you guys that. Now, in your basic stance, you wanna make sure that you can move diagonally. So you gotta make sure you can move this way, this way, all right? It's not just forward and back. But every time you do a stance change, 
or movement, make sure you know where, like when you're practicing, make sure you look down. Look down on your feet. Don't just say, oh, okay, cool, I'm in a good place. Look down and make sure that you're not, oh, you're not like this all of a sudden. Okay, because this will not only kill your knee, it gets rid of all your, your power. All right, so moving in your basic stance every time you practice, just make sure that you watch. Just do it slow. At the start, your first 200 times doing it, slow. And then you can speed it up. All right. So I'm less going to talk about the uh, stance now. I'll be moving. Now when we're moving diagonally, and this is when I wish I had my pal. So whoever wants to be a dummy here. Um, uh, we're sword. Short. You want to grab a sword and shield?
and he knows where he's going to be able to hit you. And all of a sudden, when you move laterally, you're changing the puzzle. All right? And because you know where you're going to move, you can predict what the puzzle is going to look like when you move. Anyone have questions on that statement? Cool. No? I have some confused eyes, so I just want to. No? No? Okay. So you everyone kind of understands? Couple of do that really well. Okay. Perfect. Colin does that really well. Will does it really well. Me and Matt are trying to forward reverse only. Okay. <laughs> so to practice that, you got to think about your flow of your of your fighting. All right. So if you just come here, so we can be a bit on camera. You don't have to make sure that your stance is always nice when you're practicing getting around. Uh, if you want to keep your defense, you can do this. What I tend to do, and I tell, tend to tell people. When you're practicing moving around laterally, just make it natural. I'll just sit here with my defense up, and I will just walk. All right, go on another side. Okay, I want to walk this way. Right, so then you can kind of see what the puzzle is going and looking like. Right, and maybe he wants to move forward, but you're just kind of leading, leading the dance, just kind of, I'm moving. You're not, you're not, I'm not really worried too much about him hitting me. I'm just keeping my defense up, controlling the range. Right. That's right. So just by walking around gets you the feel of improving your lateral movement, your diagonal movement of the, of the fight. So if that's something you guys want to practice when you're fighting and you're just not too worried, okay, your strikes are getting good, you're not too worried about your strikes anymore, just be, okay, what, what can I do to open up? What can I do to improve? Just start walking around and just see what happens, right? You got to make sure that your flow, your fighting is always moving. You'll see when I'm fighting, even though it's not your guys is fighting, and I'll often be like, I'll start here and then I'll move right here, right? It's just because you want to make sure that that flow, especially when you're doing combos, you want to keep moving so things open up. Any questions about that? Okay. I showed you guys how the lateral movement brings your defense up. Quickly to show you, and I know I talked about it, but I'll just show you real quick. So if I move this way, this opens up. So bring that right up to your chest. Is it punch you or is it a stretch? So have a nice up to your chest. Alright, so right now he's, he's really defended up the top. I'm not looking at it here now because I'm just going to look at the body just to show you guys. All right, so right now for this right here, it's going to be tough. Angles of attack, if I move here, flat opens up. That's another reason why you want to be moving, right? Things open up. If it's on right here, if I want to strike his arm or inside here, pretty tough. If I even take a slight, what, half a foot to the right, this, this slot opens up right here. That's what I love about uh, flat blades too. You can get these slots a lot better. So you're coming in, and he's, he's defending, and I'm like, okay, I want to hit that slot, but I can't really. Very smooth, and you can pop. So that's another reason that movement will open up angles of attack. Alright. Any questions on lateral movement, diagonal movement? Of course, you guys all know you, you swing, you point where you want to you hit. Now, to get power, even here, I'm going to use my back hip, right? I don't, have, I don't even have to use my punch, my point. This power plus this power equals this power. 
all right? When you're swinging this side, you want to make sure you use your back hip. This is the toughest one that people have a hard time with. This is a natural movement for us usually, especially if you play baseball or, or sports. Using this hip to get power is, is pretty good. Most people will understand that we will practice it. You want to be able to get this hip is a bit different. So a good practice, and I show this to almost everyone. Um, if you guys have a pel, if you have a pel, if not, get one. Put the shield nice and straight. All right, you can strike. All right, so you, you want to get those hips. You want to get that muscle memory from your hips. Strike, 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 strike. You can just do that like 50 times in front of a pel, uh, on a pel, and you can kind of loosen up your hips, and then it feels more natural. It's fast. Yeah. It is because you're 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 not stopping and then doing another strike. It's just you're following through hip because you're cocking your hip for another strike all the time. That's something that you guys can really take advantage of too. Because I know you guys, multi-strikes multi, multi strikes are, are a huge advantage for you guys. So even if you're looking at, at leg shots, you can pop, I won't do it too hard, pop. Because when you're striking and you're going through, you're already cocking your back hip to do another strike. So make sure that, that your, your hips are always in. Um, that's the basics of using your, your hips to get power. It's the same thing even if you strike up here, all right? Same thing you strike for your head, the head, you still wanna get that hip in there. It still throws all, every time you punch, if anyone's taking any martial arts, they tell you the same thing for your punches. Um, now, how does that go into footwork? Well, this is when you really gotta pay attention to your footwork. I was telling you guys earlier to just walk around them, and, or walk this way. When you realize and feel how your hips are going, you can, you can start walking and realize all of a sudden your hip cocks, all right? If you're doing your, your, your footwork properly, your hip's gonna your walk over here, all of a sudden my hip already cocked. All right, so I'm, I'm putting in that footwork that I'm going around a different angle if I wanna get his, his leg, if I'm a bit further, whatever. Um, and I need to power through maybe if he tries to block down or something. Um, and I'm just using my footwork. Oh, my hip already just, it, it's ready now. It's already halfway there to get a strike. So it's the same thing if, I, if I'm walking and then I turn around this way and I go this way, my hip caught and it's ready for a strike. Very easy, especially once you start to learn how your hips work, the whole movement always goes into it. So I can be moving around, Around him, and then oh, okay, my, my hip cocks right here, and I can go for an arm. Or, well, for you guys, I will go for a head. <laughs> to be honest, like all these shots, you should probably be going for heads, right? You want to strike here, for the head, with that hip. They, like, even, if it, even if they get a bit of a wax off, I think it's such a strong strike to the head because of your hip and your strike that it's just going to, everything's going to fly better. And it's, uh, yeah, oh, I was going to get into paints and stuff, but I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> I'm, I'm teaching a paints class after, so then you guys can kind of paint and then re-cock and then get here. Or don't even cock on the first one, you, you pretend to throw, because you're already cocked when you come in. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, so yeah, putting in that movement, make sure you're always moving in the fight. That's going to get you your biggest advantage First thing is you want to make sure your footwork, your stances are good, so that you, that you know how to move. Even if you change, start to forward, you know, uh, you know what stances you're going in. And once you can do that, make sure when you're fighting opponents that you can move around them. And just keep the flow of your fight going. And then with your hips, when you're moving around, right? And then move here, all of a sudden I got to get it. So I just did a quick change of position here. See how that kind of everything flows into each other? Any questions on that, guys? I thought that'd be good. I went quicker than I thought. That's right on. Well, thank you. I don't know how
Okay.